Hi my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our City Zoo build, Tropical Wings Zoo. So we are back once again in TW, everybody. Our last episode is linked above for you right now in case you have missed it. We uh, introduced the camels to Tropical Wing Zoo and uh, a lot more of you enjoyed last episode than I thought you might because it was really basic habitat. But if you've not seen it though, feel free to go and get caught up, my friends. Now, I've been doing lots and lots of work um, between last episode and this one, um, starting to put forth for some of the plans that I talked about in last episode as well well but there have been changes this happens more often than not and we're going to get into it as i introduce the next animal the next habitat and much much more so here we are gang we are back in tw as i've already said i do have a habit of repeating myself unfortunately when i do these episodes uh, we begin at the entrance and i've got lots to show you today there is going to be uh, what's happening next uh, as there is every single episode although last episode's one was very very in depth and changes have already been made to it anyway which is why we're going to do another one um, but i finally feel like i have ironed out my plans for the water world and I'm thinking about starting that potentially next but I don't know let's let's leave that to the end of the episode I'm teasing stuff when I've not even shown you what I've been up to uh, anyway we start at the entrance and we're going to stay relatively close to the entrance once again gang um, you know we've been over here we've been over here we're kind of in this little area now um, lots and lots is going on now um Last episode, you will remember, I put the camels in, but there wasn't really too much around the camels, was there? It did feel a little empty and a little bit blank. Um, I've since started doing more planting. Um, I've really started to kind of get fences and directional pathway um, going off in a couple of directions. Um, like I say, there's more than just the hab to show you today. Um, we're going to be obviously be introducing the bongo. It's given away in the uh, in the title and the thumbnail. That's going to be the big reveal, and we're going to obviously save that bit till last. But there are other bits I've done. I've added lots of planting um, pathway networks. I've worked on the little fountainy water section. I've added an aviary. There's loads of stuff that's been added. So there's actually a lot to show you in today episode which is uh which is nice because i feel like i just haven't had much to show for all of my work <laughs> uh, in the last few episodes and as a result it does feel like the camels are starting to feel uh, a bit more at one with the zoo and a bit more bunched in now what i will say before i start doing my reveal stuff just a little bit of chit chat um there is a chance that next episode might be a cinematic episode um because um, over the next week, what I really need to do is go and do all of the backstage stuff, all the detailing, all of the little intricate bits, because we're kind of at a point now where I've got lots of animals in the zoo, there's lots of working pieces. I don't want to get this project to a point where it kind of starts freezing when I'm adding the detail. Um, the game is running so smooth at the minute, I think it's a prime time to go and add all those little things like fire alarms and fire extinguishers and little uh, handles to gates and piping and electric networks and all these little details that I don't add like straight away. So um, yeah, so there's a chance it'll be a cinematic, but because all that detailing takes time and it might take the best part of the next week to do so. Um, but anyway, on with the reveal. So we're actually going to go this way first, everybody, and then we will backtrack and go the other way. Um, but as you can see, camels, very, very happy camels, um, settling in very nicely to their hab now. Um, I haven't really done any work on the camels, um, not changed anything, and I'm still, I'm in an R if I am going to add any more to the camels anyway, because I quite like the fact that this is small basic to the point and lots of you liked it in the comments as well so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to add too much more but we're going to go this way and what I've done is I th felt like as much as the camels were a great segue into the um 
into the, like the water area, um, we were left with a lot of space here when I started putting access gates in. So let me sh basically show you what I mean. So I basically just pulled this road up a bit further and I've added the access gates here. Now obviously we needed this access gate because we needed a way to get to our camels. I've gone with um, a bit more like low key access gates, a lot like we have done over in Adventure Africa. We've got like really heavy mechanical ones over near the Indo-Asia and the Aldabra house. Um, and I, I am going to continue to change it up as the zoo kind of evolves but I just wanted to go with some nice low key fences here and that's what I've done so I got them in place and then once I had them in place we were left with all of this space here and I was a bit I was a bit lost, I'll be honest with you, at the beginning. It weren't enough space to put an actual animal, in my opinion, and um, any animal I'd have put there would have felt a bit samey to what we've done before anyway. So then I started thinking, well, we need to kind of have some habs scattered around the zoo that are for show, basically, um, and... I did this, and I'm probably going to do this a fair amount. Now, I'm going to hope and pray and keep everything crossed that the next DLC isn't Avery's, especially if the mechanics complete mishmash and a mess and it don't work the way I've built these Avery's. Otherwise, this is going to be a lot of time spent and wasted. But for now, I think it's a thing of beauty, and I feel like I've pulled it off um, quite nicely. So, yeah, like I say, we was left with this space, and so I started adding in, um, I started adding in an Avery, basically. And this is the Avery design that I come up with. Now, I basically see this being a house to two smaller bird species, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, we're not talking about a big eagle or anything that lives in there ready to go to the bird show or anything like that. Just a couple of smaller species, I think, uh, I think makes, makes sense um, for this. I've not done the information boards. What I'm going to do is leave it to you guys in the comment section. I know a couple of people on the Discord had already made some suggestions for birds that we could put in here. Because on Discord, you get little teasers why I'm building. So if you do want to become a member of the, uh, of the Discord and see some of the stuff that I do while I'm building away, feel free to join it. You'll find the link in the description. Uh, they've left some suggestions, but obviously I'd like to give you, the wider YouTube community, uh, a chance to leave your suggestions as well. So any small bird species, it doesn't need to particularly be from any specific area in the world. I think it could be from anywhere. We're not really zoned this for a, any particular biome or continent or whatnot. So feel free to kind of, uh, throw all your suggestions out there but yeah just a couple of small aviaries I feel like it really really um, cuddles this nice little space nicely I really do it feels snug it's lovely um, so basically all I did was I worked on from the camels we had this access gate in I've added a, just a bunch of plant in you know my big thing in TW is we're trying to go quite plant heavy really natural surroundings we're not really having loads of big open spaces we will have them as and when uh, it, the time calls for it but I'm really trying to go with this nice kind of natural feel because this is in the middle of a city and we want it to feel like a big escape um, so yeah I kind of planted all this in I put the fence in got it all nice got it all snug so we hugged all this bit in few little seated areas and whatnot and then I was kind of left with this space I didn't just want to put it on the main path I wanted to add something a bit different um, so I ended up building this planter off of the flamingo section here and what's really nice about this is I've been able to go quite dense with the planting at the back and it's kind of hidden all this backstage area which I'm going to show you as well because I've done some work back there um, and then we put this in nice stoned area and just gone with the planting nice big bushes plants really pretty and i've even thrown in a little um like beehive and then we're going to scatter these all over the zoo because obviously we're going for that big natural feel we're trying to look after the world's animals and whatnot then you come up this way now the reason i've done it like this is birds are not for everybody i feel like when you go to the zoo i'm one of these people that does look at them i'm i love birds and um, my granddad had an aviary at the bottom of his garden when when he was with us and um and we always used to go out there and feed the birds and whatnot so i have a real affinity with birds and my mum is a firm believer of that all of her loved ones come back as birds so um me personally when i see birds and whatever at the zoo i like to go and look and just you know have my little five minutes whereas some people they're not really into it they'll scoot on by so that's what i've done i've done this main walkway which is going to go up to the waterway which is basically everyone's going to be excited to go up there because it's going to have all sorts it's going to have penguins crocodilians it's going to have sea lions it's going to have sea otters polar bear everything's going to be up there it's going to be a really exciting place to go in the zoo so you could go up whereas 
those of us who like uh, to take their time at the zoo uh, and spend all day there, you can have a nice little mooch around here and you get this nice little area here where you can come and have a look at your birds. So um, a slightly bigger animal would potentially be in this one. Um, but yeah, we've got like a nice little hanging frame and little areas that they can like perch on and whatnot, little sleeping box and stuff. And then you come up this way and uh, it's a slightly different one, slightly smaller species uh, maybe, and uh, we've added all of the bits and bobs in there as well. As far as the aviary is concerned, I wanted to go for a mix between kind of natural materials and something like uh, a, a, a little more industrial. Um, I don't know why, it just kind of, it really pieced itself together nicely. Like this went up, this Avery went up in like an hour. I was on one, I was like really, really inspired and it just kind of really come together quickly. Um, the roof as well is a thing of beauty and um, I kind of have learned this technique and I think we could make some nice custom roofs out of this which is great to be able to say because I'm just not a fan of the wooden roofs in the game. So um, yeah, there's a chance that I might actually be able to make some wooden roof pieces uh, using this technique. So um, you're learning, you're always learning in this game, gang. And then what I've done as well at the top, um, I know this isn't probably ideal when it rains, but we've got the correct drainage and whatnot inside anyway, but we've left all of the tops open. Um, you know, birds at zoos anyway, they get taken off exhibit certain times of the year, um, and when there's treacherous weather, things like that, like birds can be taken off exhibit uh, and they can go elsewhere, which leads me to something I will talk about when we get to the what's happening next because I'm actually going to be building all this stuff maybe we won't do all the detailing inside but we'll we'll have buildings and whatever that will represent it and uh, and things like that um so yeah that's the Avery nice little plight there I think it's really really pretty now let me just bring you around here as well because I know you're all as excited about the backs of our buildings as you are the front and all the backstage stuff so um you will remember this area did not look like this this was just a big hot green mess wasn't it because we had a big uh, grassed area here now i just basically decided to carry this road on because we wanted to come to this access gate but i thought if we're going to put an aviary here and we did have this little water area this little water station as well because it kind of helps with all the filtering of the water and stuff we could add a few more bits and bobs so i've just done this in here we've got a little area a little park up area where birds if they need to go into crates and then driven to the vets and whatever same with the flamingos we've got uh, an area for them to kind of be transported out as well so we've added this little parked area as you can see i've not quite finished all the markings on the road but we are getting there so i've added that i've also added a little kind of storage area i feel like this is where maybe like some trailers and things like that could be kept um we do one thing i do need to start adding is some hay sheds um i really need to start doing that in certain places in the zoo i've just got to pick my spots and come up with a nice design for it but i think that's something we need to come up with um and then as you can see i kind of fenced i fenced this area off um where the little water station is we put like a little work hub in there um and yeah it's just essentially just keep that um as one and to itself and what's nice is you can't really see too much of it uh from this side like I quite like seeing little bits and bobs behind because you just do at the zoo anyway, don't you? Not every single habitat is built in a way that you don't see any of the workings of the zoo. So um, yeah, I don't I don't mind it personally. Um, so yeah, I've just added all of that behind there. So we kind of got this like separate yard. The gate we got a gate there for it uh, to in and out. I did think about putting a gate over here as well but I think just the one will be fine. Uh, and then I had a few little planted areas left, so we just put some trees in just to kind of like really kind of um, hug the area again. And then from the, you know, from get a, get a guest face inside, it's really lush, it's really beautiful. The trees kind of really make this pop. Um, what's a really, really cool thing is seeing those buildings in the background. The whole point in this project for me was sight lines, making it feel realistic. And the more that I build and the more we go towards certain areas, the more it just becomes at one with the city. And I'm, I absolutely love it. Um, you know, like I love seeing like buildings, see that there? I love seeing buildings through the trees. I just, that's, that's the whole point of these projects. It really, really is. Um, it's this one in particular. Um, so yeah, and then obviously we've got our little back lots part for our staff as well. So they can go up here and then in they go 
Uh, and obviously we've caged all this off as well um, because of them being birds. We wouldn't want them to escape, but at least if they got out here, they can't get out and fly off, basically. That was my whole thinking uh, uh, around that, basically. And there is the gate in. So, yeah, that's just a little Avery area and just like a real big addition to um, the back lot area here. Sticking in some planting, getting some trees in and just really starting to bring this back lot to life. And you got to think, this, this back lot area has been left like this since about episode three when we did the flamingos. So, it really was something I had to get to um, and I needed to start working on. Especially as, you know, we're going to be going out this way eventually. And working, uh, and working out this way, um, so it's nice to have like somewhere to work from. Um, you know, we were talking on the Discord this week about how we work and how we do things, and uh, you know, you kind of get an insight into just the complete mayhem that ensues whenever I'm building because I, I never just stick to one thing like, like I mean funny I've built this now we're going over here like how do you go from there to there I, I can't answer it myself gang but um but yeah let's just flip reverse the script and uh let's work on back but yeah basically just so you know after those access gates that's where the water area will begin um but yeah let's go back this way uh walkie 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 on past the um, camel. So uh, I've carried on working along here. You all remember I kind of started this. We know, now go round a corner. Uh, I'll explain all this in a minute as well, but we now go round a corner and uh, we kind of work off towards what was gonna be Pygmy Hippo territory. It's now a different animal, but the Pygmy Hippo is still gonna be kind of on this way. Um, I'll explain all in a moment. Um, but I decided to start adding some plants in here as well trying to bring it to life a little um yeah i just think it's uh, really really nice and then i found these on the workshop and um one of my big things with this project was i didn't want to add too much on off the workshop on here but i see these uh koi carp that someone had made out of pieces on the workshop i decided to throw a few in here so if you're kind of looking at it from a bird's eye it looks like we got a few koi carp all swimming about i think that's quite cool isn't it I quite like it personally. So yeah, I just decided to throw them in there just for a little bit of detail, basically. Um, I know you can make koi carp actually swimming about using the screens. You can drag video in. Um, Paulsley, when he was making YouTube content a long time ago, he did it. Um, in a little pond and I know you can do that and I was thinking about it but then I thought this is quite a big area I'm, I'm not going to bother and I just added these little pieces instead but as you can see you can't really tell what they're made out of because you just literally get such a slim glimpse because of all of the detail with all the planting and whatnot we've done um, and it's really just kind of tied all this area in um, I bought the wall all the way around and then, uh, you know, we've kind of finished the wall there and that's kind of like where our hab starts. You will notice these little black pieces coming out as well. These are like little water runoff taps. So if the water ever was to get like really, you know, it's basically drainage. Um, so it runs off into here. And as you can see, we've uh, kind of got the same thing going on over here. It is a technique that is used in popular places like this. So, um, yeah, we've just kind of got that drainage. So we now come to this area. Um, I was looking at the zoo and um, I was wondering where our last eatery was from the entrance. Obviously, it is, uh, it's just uh, flamingo flavours. Um, we don't actually have any real restaurants in the zoo. I'm going to have to think about adding one soon, like our first proper restaurant. I know we've got the one over in the African area, but that literally serves the whole of Adventure Africa. Um, and it's not the biggest restaurant either. Uh, but a lot of the other places, like the Snack Shack is a pit stop. We're going to be putting another little uh, place over here, which is going to be really similar to that, which again, it's going to be another kind of pit stop. And then we've got those little uh, carts scattered all over the zoo. But that's the last one. So I decided to just put, put a little hot dog cart um here um and just a little bit of seat in it, it broke the area up quite nicely as well um i know it's quite early in the zoo to kind of have it because you wouldn't have seen much but it depends what direction you go in the zoo you know like you might come in and go off this way and get sucked into this big circle you'll go around you'll come back and you'll be like oh i need to stop you know it just depends because we're not like i said last episode we're not just doing a big anti-clockwise clockwise circle we're doing loads of triplicates to come off as well so um you know it's always good to have eateries the next big thing there's a bathroom there but um other than that 
I need to add some toilet blocks because we've got toilets in places, but I do need to start adding some toilet blocks because um, that's something we are really lacking in the zoo and uh, definitely something we probably need need to add at some point. Um, but yeah, um, a nice little eatery. It needs some finishing. I need to kind of go around and do the uh, do all the edging. Um, I decided not to go with like tiles for this one. I just wanted it to be like a change of slab that was used or concrete or whatever. Um, and then I've used wooden trim instead of the instead of the stone. I just like to mix and match materials sometimes. And uh, because of the nature of the way that this goes down, um, it was obviously I'm always trying to work with terrain and trying to make it look um, really cool. Um, that um, I decided to use kind of like a wooden trim rather than carrying on using the stone because it was becoming quite a really kind of rocky stone heavy zoo where that was concerned. So yeah, just a nice little area. Obviously it needs a bit of work, all the planting is doing. Um, but to be honest with you, I didn't really know how I wanted to do it, so I didn't uh, didn't carry on. But yeah, we carried on all the real heavy planting. Now, what I'm going to say to you, gang, this is really, really heavily planted in this area, and I've done it on purpose. Most zoos will go heavy on the planting in and around the bongo ha habitats because they're quite a shy species, okay? Um, I've used as inspiration... Dublin Zoo's bongo habitat. It literally, at Dublin Zoo's, it's next to the Akapi. Um, I've been to Dublin Zoo. It is a fantastic zoo. If you're ever in Dublin, go to the zoo. It is a really fantastic zoo. But it's, they're next to the Akapi, and both habitats are really, really overgrown. Lots and lots of vegetation. Um, and then they have these small openings for the bongo that you can kind of look through. And you really do have to look quite hard to find them. And um, you don't have to look that hard in this zoo but I have gone really heavy on the vegetation and I've gone heavy as a result around the surrounding areas now again we were left with um kind of like a really big space here and um I was I mean and I wanted to do it I didn't want to put another aviary in I just thought maybe they're a bit too close we can scatter them a bit further apart around the zoo and if I did do an aviary, I'd want to do something a bit different as well. So instead, I decided to do like a little wild gardens. Um, I think it would be a nice little uh, sort of educational piece for, for the kids especially. Um, so I really just left this getting dense and overgrown. So you can take this little kind of like muddy kind of mulchy path off. Uh, as you can see, it's really, really kind of like heavily surrounded in the plants this side. And then on the other, you've got like these little beehives and a little insect hotel kind of thing. Um, I need to create like a little like sign post I couldn't create anything small enough so um, I need to kind of like create a little sign post for the bees and one for the little insect hotel um, and yeah like you can see I just went really really heavy on all the foliage the trees and whatnot all overhanging the fences and uh, yeah I think it I think it turned out really nice actually I really really like um, the way that all kind of like organically come together and then you come here and you are back on the main path something to note before we go up to the bongos all of the custom pathing isn't done up here because um I, i've still got to basically hash out how i want the surrounding areas to work remember i don't always work on a one habitat it might it might seem like I work on one habitat per episode, but I'm always forward thinking. I'm actually working two or three habitats ahead at any one time. So um, whenever we go into episodes and stuff's not finished, that's usually why, because I'm not quite sure 100% how I'm going to continue things on. But before we do go that way, you're going to see there's quite a bit of elevation here. I wanted that to be the case. I really, really needed to add some more of that. Um, in the main area of the zoo. We've got lots of it over in Adventure Africa, but not much over here. So added a bit of elevation. You're going to see there's going to be planting that's kind of going to be higher at the back, lower at the front. I think that will be really nice once that's all put in. Um, and then as you can see, I went with stairs this side and the wheelchair access this side. And it is a bit more of a kind of like smoother uh, transition down um, to to the uh, to the bottom. A lot of them have been quite steep in the zoo, um, and uh, so yeah, as you can see, the uh, the little restaurant guy up there, um, it's a bit a bit higher up and a bit further away. But um, but yeah, now we work around to the main part of today's episode. Now I'm going to throw this out there now. I don't want any comments telling me you haven't put any um, vegetation protectors. Um, because 
I did enough reading and I did enough looking at habitats that they just didn't do it with the bongos. Now, I'm not saying they wouldn't eat the vegetation and I'm not going to sit here and say they wouldn't like tread areas down. They would, they just would, but they're not as destructive as some other animals in zoos, which is why the zoos don't feel the need to do it. And again, it's why you can get away with going really heavy on the vegetation and making things a little prettier, basically. So... Just keep that in mind, gang, because I just know I'm going to get a comment saying, you should put protectors on the trees to stop this, that, and the other. I did enough reading. I always, you know me, gang, by now. I always do. I always like to get it right. And from what I read and what I see, it looks as though I didn't really need to do it. So, this is Zibongo Habitat. I'm going to zoom out. It's really difficult to get it all in. This is the Bongo Habitat habitat it actually goes down here further as well because of all the vegetation it's really hard basically this is what i've built um there's i've noticed just as i started making the episode i always like to check the the the, the building and whatever i've done just before i go go and record i've just realized i haven't quite lined the pool properly their weight their way into their water area hasn't been lined the way I would usually do it. But the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that I might not because this is more of a kind of re natural reserve that the, the zoo have kind of built as a result of the gorillas. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm an NR in whether or not I want to do it. But um, so basically, this was supposed to be the hippo hab. I said from day one when I built the Primates of Africa um, hab way back in episode five or six, I wanted the hippos to be down here because I thought it'd be cool to be able to see the hippos and the gorillas at the same time. Now, I started digging it all out and to do the hippos how I want to do it, I've got to go a hell of a lot deeper than I've gone with this habitat. And the deeper I went, the sillier it looked with the gorillas in the background it just didn't work it it just looked awful so i gave up basically i leveled the ground and i said to myself what else can we put here now i'd already said to you in the last episode i was thinking about putting the bongos a bit further around the corner so all i've done is i'm going to rotate those two animals i think i'm going to go bongos here and potentially hippos next to them if the hippos again don't work though in the next area over, I'm going to move the hippos over into the water area, basically. Because it don't matter if the hippos are here or not anymore, because they're not going to work with the gorillas how I wanted them to, basically. So I might move them over into the water area. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you think I should move them over there anyway, over into the water area, and do another animal next door. Um, it's one of the reasons why all the planting isn't done, and I haven't put the path a bit further on. Because I wanted to kind of give you your chance to give me your suggestions on it gang because um it's all well and good me having all my plans all like for what animals i'm doing i've got my animal list and like we're really doing this zoo in a particular way but um i can move stuff you know and i think sometimes when i sit here and i think about it myself it's good to get the point of view of someone someone else and so i'm giving you the chance basically to let me know what you think do we carry on you'll be able to see the area a bit clearer when we do the next section of today's episode the what's happening next bit but for now i'm i'm in an r in so i basically long story short i moved the bongos around the corner and i think it's one of the best decisions i've ever made i made this beautiful little waterfall cascades into their their water pool it's really heavy it's really beautifully planted it just really come together so so nice they've got a nice little outbuilding at the back which i've done in a different style as well it's a mixture of um you know brick and mortar and wood and metal and it just looks so nice i've done the doors different inside obviously i'm just explaining it. i'm gonna show you it all in a minute but um I just love the way it come together and it's got two really small viewing areas and that is it. The rest of it is enclosed off, the public can't see it and I think that's one of the nicest things that I like about it. The big, big win from this habitat is the gorilla yard finally feels finished. And that might seem silly because the gorilla yard has been finished since the dawn of the bloody series, and it? it was done right in the beginning. But because we always had that that piece of water uh, expanse, and there was nothing beyond it, now that we've got uh, fences up and this is all filled in, it feels it finally feels finished, and it really, really, I just think the gorilla have now just 
it looks even better than it did before and that's that's saying something because we all love we all love the primates of africa area so um let's um let's take a look at this shall we gang uh, in a bit more detail so this is uh the bongo hab so this is one of the one of the viewing areas we've got this one here and then we've got this one here. They're really small viewing areas. Now, lots of people might be thinking, that doesn't seem that deep. Um, I've done it the same way as the Gemsbok. I've done the same technique, and it is the same height as the Gemsbok as well. And we've put all of the wood in there and whatnot. And uh, essentially, from the looking and researching and whatever I was doing, this would be sufficient enough with uh with this fence and whatever um you know they're not a mountain goat they're not gonna you know openly look to climb up here and jump the fence um so yeah what i was thinking is i might just run a little electric fence just in front of that anyway because then it is double um protection and things like that i might just do that anyway but um but yeah i've done exactly the same technique as i did with the uh, gems bark and i I've probably did it with uh, lots of the animals actually because um it is a nicer more natural technique now you're going to see that the hab actually slopes downwards it kind of like does a really lovely natural really great gradual slant down into the pool um done it on purpose water will run off that way for a start but also you kind of i wanted this to be deeper here so that we could get a good view of the back because obviously this little water system here needed to be higher than this water system here because of the um waterfall that i decided to add in on the hab now i was going to add a waterfall like this on the hippos um but because obviously i wanted to do underwater viewing areas and that for the hippos that's why i had to go so deep and that's why it didn't work and uh to be honest with you it's a blessing in disguise because i really do feel like the bongos hab has really come together beautifully so uh it goes all the way up here the bongo hab all the way up to the fence line now the fence is higher than their habitat obviously we've kind of banked this up there is uh this is slightly higher as you can see there's like fencing at the back as well it's all kind of like banked up um done that on purpose obviously like we want to keep the animals kind of like low down in and sunk in because of uh the way we want to view the hab and whatnot and then I've just gone really, really dense with all of the vegetation. Trees all towards the back and towards the fence line. And then we've bushed all up, really heavy grasses, lots of like scattered woods and rocks and things like that. Um, and I just wanted to go really super, super natural basically with this habitat. And uh, because of the species we've used, I've been afforded the uh, the opportunity to do so. It's really nice because every angle you look at it, you, you, you find something new. You know, like we've got, um, we put these little... Um, concrete sections in um because this is kind of like just kind of shaping the water system it goes further up um we put like little um water grates in because obviously the runoff and whatnot um and then there's these fences that you really really can barely see when you're kind of like looking into the hab because of how overgrown it all is um again we've put like logs and all sorts of bits and bobs to really just kind of like bring it to life uh the waterfall is really really nice you'll obviously see that working uh in the cinematics towards the end of the episode um i've i've done a not I, I think i've done a good enough job i'm not i'm not an expert at waterfalls um i'm i'm no estan wolf let's just put it that way he always makes the most beautiful waterfalls i'm not very good at them but i'm good enough to kind of make something like this and get away with it and uh and it looked really really nice i just added a bunch of foliage on the waterfalls as well to kind of have to be fair they're up there to hide some ugliness and whatnot but um but it just kind of gives you that kind of natural lovely natural feel and if you're looking at it there look at how lovely and how like the middle of the waterfall it's really kind of squared off the gorilla's climbing frame as well and it, there's there's a point where you can see bongo gorilla and the mandrel if you've got really good eyes you can see the mandrel off in the distance as well which is amazing imagine being able to stand at one hab and see three animals it's really really cool um and that was the whole point of trying to build this hab the way i've built it um so yeah really really lovely waterfall um and then again like i put these fences in 
it's all rocked up and whatever, um, keeping the animal nice and low in the habitat. Um, and then we continue over this way. Again, I just continued all the same kind of like concepts. Um, you know, it follows suit all the way in the hab. It's just a, a lonely little tree here. There is a chance I might add a couple more trees like along this fence line, but um, for now, I didn't want to keep going and adding too much because I've still got all this to do because um I, I like i've already said i'm not sure i'm going to do it but um yeah more more kind of like planting more rocks and logs and whatever um and then we've gone really heavy again over here with the bushes and the trees and i've tried to like work all of their pieces in the hab into um you know into the in, into the foliage and whatnot so we've got their scratch post on a tree and then we've got this little like leaf um thing over here i've tried to put it in bushes to kind of hide it i might add a bush this side a little higher and try and hide it a bit more um but you can't really see that from the viewing areas anyway like it's really tough um only from kind of here can you see it and you'd really have to be looking wouldn't you to know kind of what that is because of the way the log kind of sticks out there um so um yeah and then obviously you got their building off in the background we'll take a look at in a moment but the bongos look how lovely the bongos look in the habitat with that waterfall off in the background um we've got these guys over here laying down um in the long grass um i just love 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 doing these habs where they can be more natural um you know and the animals like really disappear into the foliage um, but every angle you look at it, it just gets prettier like look at the look at the gorilla viewing area off in the distance now i'll show you this hab from there as well so you can get a good view of um you know how you can see this hab in loads of different ways um, and then we come to the back of the hab and we now come to kind of like more where the controlled area is where our zoo staff enter, where the animals are kept, their holding building and whatnot, and how I've designed that. Um, so we've got this one piece here, because I thought it'd be nice for the zookeepers to be able to come up and take a look into the hab um, from this direction. Um, but uh, And then we just added a load of um, details down the bottom, like a little electric box and some lighting and whatnot. I've got to do lots and lots of this detailing all over the zoo, but I just thought, why am I here? I might as well do it. Obviously, the fences as well, they change from here. So this is more of our, like, sturdier stuff. This is our decorative stuff. Um, it's kind of like how I was thinking when I was building it. Um, and, yeah, this is the um, this is their hard shelter. Now, I've done it in the same way I've done lots of the animals, where we've got this little runoff area. Um, so they go off into the back. Now, I've not built, I've not built this bit back here uh, yet, um, but I have spaced it out so you can see exactly where the fence is going to run, basically. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to get all this in order. Um, and until I bring this fence around, I won't know if I need to pull any of this out a bit further or whatnot. So um, I just wanted to leave it. Um, for now, um, I've added um, some stuff back here. We had this water plant station thing here anyway. I've added a manhole cover kind of just um, masked it all off and then I've done this little walkway up to here um, and then I have done like another sort of water treatment plant that's like inside here so you can pick these up and then add these little bits running off um, basically into the water um, I just felt I didn't really know how to finish this area off and I just felt like it needed something so I just decided to add this and I'm, I'm also, also thinking I'm probably going to have to add a little bit of guard rail just to the edge there but um, you can't see any of it really from the gorilla's perspective. You can't really see much so that's quite nice from like gorilla um, point of view. Uh, you can just see the building in the background. Um, so yeah, I think we did a pretty good job uh, um, trying to like fill in this. It was just ugliness basically that just needed covering like the edges of the pool and whatever. And uh, I think we did a good enough job of doing that and then making it fill at one with the area and all. Um, so this is the um, this is our bongos hard shelter basically. Um, so we've got our little entrance here. You go through the door inside. Um, that's uh, our keeper entrance. I've just um, put some. Uh, 
put some stuff on the roof already but not finished it all and then um, I'll just take you in this way it's easiest so we've got a big slide shutter door on the outside and then on the inside though we've gone with more um, stable doors I've gone slightly different on this one um, mainly because when I was building I didn't design it properly um, and so I couldn't do the slide doors in here so instead we've gone with stable doors which I just went deeper um, with the um, with the stables basically um, I've done one where we've got it shut it's a slightly smaller stable and I'm just going to leave that one shut because I just think it adds a nice bit of um, a nice bit of detail there um, so that one's uh, shut so this is where our keeper comes in I put like a little gate there a little separation sort of gate and um, which would obviously be kept shut so they when the animals are coming in and out they wouldn't come over here to the kind of keepers area um, and then, yeah, it's really, really simple. Just really, really simple stuff. Just some stable doors, some openings. Hey, presto, you know, like lock system. Locks into the floor and whatnot. I'm probably going to put some locks on the top as well. Um, got all our lighting in. I do need to probably do a little bit more lighting on this section here. Where... Um, where mainly like the zookeeper and the animals walk in and out, probably just need to put some lights there. I, I totally forgot about it to be honest, but um, the rest of the lights look really, really cool. I quite like uh, how they've come together. Little um, feeders at the back as well, and then just there. Um, bits that they sleep on. We could have gone either or with this. We could have gone concrete like we've done, or we could have gone with softer um, soil uh, in here because um, um, you can go with um, both basically for the bongos, but lots of zoos like to use this system because it's just easier to clean basically um and uh and then uh, we just got our bits here for if we ever like hose it all down and clean it through and stuff like that so yeah like these are uh, these all end up looking very very similar don't they these um these um hard shelters and that um but I do like this one because it's slightly different but I'm continuing this kind of like wooden design and the open tops and just think it looks nice i think it's a, a really really nice design that we're using um and then yeah as you can see it's all fenced off we've got our gate there um if we ever need to shut that gate and whatnot so um yeah i think it i think it turned out really really nice gang i absolutely i'm in love with this hab and i'm in love with it because of how it looks from different angles and the way we can see the gorillas still in the background like this is the one i was saying where you can if you stand here and you look hard enough that up there is where the mandrels go in and out of their little um, tubed sections uh, and they've got the rope that goes across so sometimes you see the the mandrels walking across it looks like they're walking on thin air because from here you can't really see the rope but um you sometimes see the mandrels and then you can see the gorillas all on their climbing frames as well and the gorillas do come up to the edge here um, and they come up to the edge here as well so that's quite cool and you get to kind of see them mooching about um, whilst looking at the bongos and the other thing as well is because um, I said I was going to show you didn't I um, you can see the animals from here so that's the gorillas viewing area and uh, you can see that okay I admit that you can see the uh, guests viewing sections which is something you try to avoid but I think for this instance um, we uh, we can ignore it and just enjoy the fact that you can see a really beautiful hab without seeing really their hard shelter and uh, it, it feels from here it feels like it's part of the gorilla hab doesn't it because there's no visible walls um, and that's kind of like what we want to achieve with some other habs at a later date so um, yeah I feel like I've um, done a pretty good job so be sure to let me know in the comment section below what you make of it. So we are here at the what's happening next. And I'll keep this nice and short this time because I gave you a big breakdown of everything that's happening last time. But there are still things we need to cover, gang. Um, so we've built here. Um, we now know we're going to work off into the water area over here now first and foremost i've already said it in the comment section below um, this path is going to wind around and it's going to come around this way and it's eventually going to join back up here right so we've got area here to do something with now i'm not sure if it's big enough for the hippos and i'm not sure if it's going to work for the hippos I, I, but you know i don't mind if it doesn't now because my whole thing initially was to put the hippos here now if the hippos end up going over into the water area that is fine by 
me. It really, really is because I feel like I can do their underwater viewing sections a bit easier if I'm being honest, if I went over there, but I'm not sure, whatever, we can work on it. If not, um, I'm not really sure what animal to put in here, I'm um, going to be honest. Someone mentioned about putting the orangutans close to this lot, but I want to have another Asian area. Um, I wanted to do like another, because we've got the clouded leopard that we could do. Um, we've got another species of monkey that we could do next to the orangutans. I wanted to do like a separate section, like almost like another, not, not, not a primates of Africa house, but like another house like area with a big outdoor bit. Um, so I didn't really want to put the orangutans here as much as they make sense. Um, but, um, at, you know, like the animal list gets tweaked constantly. Someone mentioned the akapi and, um, we don't have it on our animal list, um, but if it could go in here in a similar type thing to this and it worked, I would think about adding the agape potentially to the list because I still don't think we're going to fill this zoo up with the animals that we've got on our list. But, um, it, you know, I, I limit the animals because I, it helps me plan um, habitats and stuff a lot easier. But, yeah, potentially we need um, an animal kind of like to go in here to complete that transition round into the Indo-Asian area off of this path. Now, um, you, will, uh, you will have seen, obviously, I've left it. This has gone really low and I've left this bit high. And the reason for that is, is I want to have a path that kind of almost um, follows this one in a in a in a way. But when it gets to like here, it's going to go off in this direction. So it's going to go off in that direction, like and be a bit higher up um, because that's going to go off into a, like other deeper areas of the zoo. Like I say, we've got main paths, and then we've got tributaries that are coming off of it. So that's going to go off into like another part of the zoo, which is why I've left that bit high. Um, but I kind of want to follow it so that we can have another step down, maybe about there. And then once we've done that, then that will go off that way and this will come around this way. So that's why I've left that the way I've done it. And then um, the, the, I, the plan is to still take this piece of path from about here up this way that's going to be slightly higher so we can put that little tunnel here uh, and then have a little another section of camels the other side that is still the plan but it won't be to the croc house because i've changed where the croc house is going to go so i've been thinking about this area a lot over here and i said oh could we get the penguins and polar bears that is just not going to be big enough to do them down here so what i've decided is i think the perfect starter to the water area would be to do our crock house um in here basically we can make the most of all this space and it, and it really doesn't matter if we put the crock house like in here right next to all these buildings because it's going to be an indoor kind of like experience anyway um and the crock house might come around and i might bring it up and around i kind of like that basically if you can imagine it in there because I, I would imagine it's going to be quite a big building. And then this little section down here, I might do this as like, um, like I might do like a building here that's like a quarantine unit and then a slightly bigger building here that's like a holding area for animals that are off exhibit maybe. Um, they wouldn't be decorated inside. They'd just be like um, essentially uh, facades for buildings, wouldn't they? Similar to, similar to this one and similar to... Uh, to this one where the inner workings of the building don't actually exist um but yeah i think that that might be cool to kind of fill that space in down there and then we could have another like staff gate potentially like here the road could come round the road wouldn't join up but we'd just have a staff gate like a uh, pedestrian one there and then um because we know this is coming off this way we could have a fire exit here for our uh, guests out into the uh into the main uh park in case there's any emergencies or whatever because remember, I am having to add those. Um, so yeah, the croc house is probably going to go there. And then what I was thinking is, we could then have a small otter hab, potentially here, because um, I think that'd be cool. And then from about there, we're going to segue into our sea lion area. Now, I'm probably going to do... So what I want to do is I'm going to create a sea lion exhibit so that one side is just going to be like their then their hab basically we're well, gonna have some viewing areas whatever and then there's going to be another side that's going to have their show area basically so one's going to feel a lot like 
it's going to both feel really different, essentially, both sides. But I want to do it so that we go quite high with our path on one side. So that's why I'm thinking that that path joining up there might be um, might be perfect. Um, joining that up there um, because this path on this side of the um, uh, of the sea lion experience is going to be a lot higher so I think it might be perfect to, to kind of join it up to that side because you'd come up and then you'd be greeted by the sea lions basically and then we'd have the sea lion show maybe like just kind of like tucked um, to the side uh, essentially it the, it's a logistical nightmare the sea lions I'm just gonna throw it out there I tried to do the sea lions for this episode as well when the um hippos didn't work like i say i bulldozed that area and i started to do the sea lions then they were a logistical nightmare so i knocked that on the head because i wanted to get an episode out this week so then i started working on the bongos but they are they're gonna the, the, i can't anticipate the sea lions being any time soon as much as people want to see it it is just a headache such a headache any water animal in this game is a headache especially those that you want to dive and it to look natural um it really is um but um you know there's certain areas that i kind of we need to start work on this area um because if i could especially if we get the croc ass in if i can get the croc ass in this corner disappears and i just think it's going to look so nice once that corner there disappears you know, I've got so much work to do on other bits and bobs, but um, that's what I'm going to do. Um, otter, otter enclosure, and then a big sea lion enclosure. And then what we could do is at the back of the, right at the top of the sea lions, we could then add the, uh, we could add the pygmy hippos up there potentially. Um, and then the aquarium, you know, which is just going to be a building in case we get an aquarium DLC. I'm wondering what we're going to get. It's not far away, gang. I know we're going to get a DLC soon because the timing's about there. Um, so, yeah, I wonder what we're going to get. And then, uh, and then yeah, I don't really know, like, where we go, where we go after that point. But it's going to be interesting. Whatever happens, it's going to be interesting, gang. But uh, next episode, you could expect any of the stuff I talked about last time. But I would anticipate, potentially, it's finally time for that croc house. So there you have it, my friends. We're done and dusted for another episode of a Tropical Wings Zoo. Let me know what you make of the bongo habitat, my friends. Would very much appreciate your feedback. Um, I'm absolutely in love with it, but um, I'm biased because I'm the man that's sitting here building it, and I'm very, very proud of this project. I absolutely love it uh, to this point. Um, but yeah, just let me know your feedback, and also do let me know um, with regards to the hippos. If you think we should move them over into the water area, what would you place? Uh, the next animal along uh from the bongo you know i love your feedback because it actually helps me process all of the information i'm constantly working with uh but i am done and dusted enjoy the cinematics my friends uh if you're new around here consider hitting that subscribe button it's the best way to support the channel uh drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it as well and on top of that in the description box you can find stuff like my discord i've talked about it a lot in today's episode if you want to become a bigger member of the community and get involved feel free to um go and join that discord and come and chat with me and the rest of my lovely lovely people on there but until until next time, stay safe, stay humble, and I will see you all real, real soon.